So I want to show you this very useful circuit I came up with to detect water. And uh, it was originally designed to work with the trig board here so that any time water is detected, like a leak in the basement or even uh, rain outside, you get a push notification sent to your phone. And it's, it's actually a very useful application for the trig board. But instead of just talking about trig board stuff, I also modified the circuit to simply sound a buzzer and an LED up here. So it's so sensitive that even if we touch the probes here across my entire body, it sets it off. And obviously this works fine in water as well. And because this was designed for the trig board, the beauty here is that everything revolves around low power design. So right here, you see that we're applying three volts to that circuit. It's just sitting there and it's pulling less than three microamps. So this is perfect for a battery powered application. You throw a battery onto this circuit, toss it somewhere, and it will only pull three microamps. So you're gonna get years of battery life out of something like this. So it's actually a very simple circuit, and I've, I've made videos on water detection circuits in the past, but this one I think is the best I've, I've ever used. And uh, as you see, it's just a couple components here, a couple MOSFETs, two diodes, that's it. And of course you have your probe out here, which by the way, I used to make my own probes out of stainless steel bolts, and at one point I used copper tape. But I really recommend using like an actual water detection probe kind of like this that has all of the hardware and everything. Uh, I've been using these for a while now and they've been working great. So anyway, the probe though is just a contact here that comes into the circuit right here. And let's ignore these two diodes for a second here and just look at the two P-channel MOSFETs. And if you look here, if you have detection across the probe like water or even me touching the two probes, Let's just assume that that means VBAT will be present on the gate of this P-channel FET. So that would then pull the gate to the source, turning this MOSFET off. And when you do that, we're then not going to have VBAT on the gate here of the second P-channel MOSFET, which would mean this gate is low, turning on this MOSFET. So then we have VBAT at the drain here, turning on the LED or the buzzer. Simple as that, that's how this works. Now the cool thing about this circuit, and this was something I've always wanted to try out, is you know we'd have to put a pull down resistor on these gates, you know, so that when this is just sitting open, this gate's not flapping in the breeze, you know, not just you know turning on and off all by itself. So, but instead of using a resistor, I use a, uh, a shot key diode, and I'm using a 1N5817 for this. And the reason you want to use a shot key is because there is a tiny bit of leakage current through the shot key. And that's enough actually to keep this gate low. So I'm using shot key diodes to uh, work essentially as pull down resistors on these gates. And this works great and keeps the whole circuit ultra low power. So even if I dead shorted this out here, it's still going to pull microamps. You know, and the reason I thought this was kind of cool is because on the trig board circuit, I wanted it so that even if rain is present here or there's contact here, uh, you still maintain a low current in the circuit. So then your only leakage current is through this diode here, uh, through the shot key diode. And it's still, like I said, single digit microamps. And you'll see that when we move on to the trig board circuit. So that's all there is to it. And if this, if you don't like the idea of using diodes here, you could use you know, a 100K and a 100K, you know, resistor there. But this was kind of cool. And actually, I'm surprised how well it works. Uh, so that's all there is to that circuit. Let's move on to the trig board circuit now. Uh, yep, that's all there is to it. So it's basically half of that circuit. Uh, the other one was essentially an inverter here so that, you know, the trig board will go high here when there's nothing there. So when you actually, uh, when it detects uh, some water or your hand or whatever touching over here, it'll actually pull this line or actually it'll disconnect this so that, you know, you no longer have the 4.2 volts there. So that's why I had to add the second uh, MOSFET here to then invert the signal to drive, you know, a buzzer or an LED. But it's exactly the same idea. So when we have detection here, this gate 
would go high, turning this off so that the input then falls down. And that's exactly how the trig board works. You know, we're monitoring a voltage on the sensor input. And I'll show you that. We're going to hook this circuit up to a trig board and, and we'll look at it. So as soon as it sees that, that 4.2 volts go away, wakes up the trig board, sends out a push notification, water leak detected. Super simple. And uh, let's do that now. Let's take a look at it. All right, so I've got the trig board circuit wired up, uh, which, by the way, if you go over to the docs page off to the side here, you'll see the water leak detector projects page. And uh, we've got the full diagram here exactly the way you see it here. Links to all of the parts seen here so you can build this circuit up for yourself. And by the way, you know, on a breadboard, it looks kind of clunky. But uh, in reality, you know, like if we look here at the rain sensor thing, you know, I sort of just wired it all up right on that TO92 uh, MOSFET there and then just hot glued it. So it was actually a pretty simple install. So just a quick test here. Let's see if we can wake the trig board up. We've got the same three volts uh, input there to the board. And if I just touch my fingers across the probes, you see the blue LED turns on. Now what's cool about the trig board is that right now, it's going to check the status of this contact. You know, we've got that timer, so we could like, in an, let's say your basement was flooded. You could, you know, send the notification out when there, the flood occurred or when the leak occurred, and then ha use the timer to then check this probe once an hour or every 15 minutes, whatever you want, and to see if the, the, uh, the water is still present. And then also watch this, when I let go of this, it wakes up the trig board as well. So it's both ways. It detects when water is present and also when the water is removed. I don't know what you might want to do with the removed part, why you would want to wake it up. Maybe like some kind of, you know, rain sensor or whatever, but it would have to like fill it up a little bit, you know, if it's raining and then when the water like drains out, then wake it up. I don't know. But anyway, that's kind of cool. Let's launch the configurator. Oh, before we do that, let's look at the current. All right, so this is really sweet. So we've got the trig board here. It's powered by three volts. Uh, it's monitoring the probe, and this is real current here. What we're looking at, there's, you know, there's nothing else hooked up here. We're looking at less than, you see the average current right here? We're looking at less than two microamps for this entire system. So this is an IoT leak detector pulling less than two microamps. Awesome. And the way this circuit is designed here with that diode pull down is even if I touch these, like that. It's a dead short across the probe. Let's look at, you see it, it woke up there. Let's look at the current now. About three microamps. So that's the leakage now through the diode. That's why I use that diode, you know, we're using the leakage current of the shot key diode as basically a pull down resistor replacement. Awesome. And this works great. You know, at first I wasn't sure, like, I thought I might get some false positives or, you know, sitting outside. That's why I built this rain sensor and just set it up outside for a couple months. And it worked. I didn't ever get a false positive. Uh, no rogue push notifications or anything crazy like that. It didn't oscillate. This works great. So I was actually pretty impressed with this. Now let's look at the uh, configurator page for a second. Okay, so let's push and hold the wake button until we see it flashing. We'll go and connect to trig board. All right, cool. So what I wanted to show you here is that you can actually use the status here to look at it. So contact closed. So right now it thinks the contact is closed. And then when we touch it, you see I've flipped to contact open, contact closed, open. So when you're setting this up with a trig board, that's how you would you would actually configure it. So water is detected when it thinks the contact is open. You know, so just as an example, you might go down here and wake up on contact open, save that, and then wherever you're installing this, like I've got these all over the place, but like you might put in garage for this, save that, and then leak detected, you know, whatever you wanted. And then, like I said before, you've got the timer here. So you could, after a leak is detected, if it is still open, that means that water is still present. And then that's your message. You can put like, you know, leak is still detected. 
And then if you're new to the trig board, this is really cool, but you've got all these options to send the message out. You can send it out via push over, push safer, if this then that, so you can send you know, emails, you can uh, log it to a Google Sheet, uh, you can um, you could turn the lights on and off in the house or you know, some alarm system. And then also for more advanced users, you've got UDP and MQTT here. So send the message packet over to your own home security system. And I've made videos on that in the past. But anyway, I thought that was a super cool, simple circuit that you can build up. You don't have to use the trig board. I don't want this whole video to be a big commercial for the trig board, although that's the way I'm using it, of course. Uh, you could just set it up with a little buzzer and an LED, and I plan on doing that as well. Just I might throw these under like the sinks and stuff you know, around the house just in case there's ever a leak. But uh, anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.